acting has stayed the same. I've just gotten better at it. Was there a series of instances that started you on this kind of elevation path? Doing horror films actually really helped. <laughs> what was your favorite thing about doing White Lotus? He thinks I'm an ass. Were you an ass? No, I was actually trying to not be an ass. That you failed? It's very funny and very dark. I do think life is very funny and approaching even dark things with humor is very important. What brought you to die in a gunfight? Who doesn't like a good love story? Without giving away everything, give me one little more taste of what it's about. Hey family, it's Carlos Watson. Have one of the most interesting actresses in Hollywood today, Alexandra Daddario. Now she may be best known for her work in the Percy Jackson film series. You've also seen her in Baywatch with The Rock and Zac Efron. You may remember her in True Detectives with Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. Now she has got a fantastic new film that's just come out, Die in a Gunfight. You don't want to miss it. She's also in the HBO miniseries, The White Lotus. Alexandra Daddario, one of our new favorites, enjoy. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Hey, Alexandra. Hello, how are you? Good, how you doing? I'm very good. Are you in New York or are you elsewhere? You know, I'm, I'm a New Yorker, but it's mm. funny you should ask that. I've been feeling more and more like an Angelina lately. One of the things I like about New York, my folks met in New York, and I lived in New York for a long time, or for a time, and New York is a very late night place where I feel like things stay open constantly. And I've always been surprised with LA that it feels like LA kind of goes to sleep a little bit early. Is that your experience or have you found yes, a different LA? Yes, a thousand percent. I mean, growing up in New York and being a teenager in New York, it was wild looking back. And I think that was perfect for that time of my life. You know, and when you're a teenager in New York City, you grow up pretty fast. You do go out and you spend more late nights. As I've gotten older, I don't like to do that kind of stuff anymore. So Los Angeles is sort of perfect for me now because everything's a little bit earlier. People like to get up early and hike and there's not a lot of going out till 4 a.m. here. Um, at least in my experience. Yeah. Wait, so how did you get into acting? Because I think I read that your folks might have been lawyers. Did any of them play particularly big roles in kind of how you, you know, came to see the world and kind of your choices around acting? There's definitely a theatrical aspect to being an attorney, I think, okay. um, especially a trial attorney. So I maybe I got it from that, but I think I was, I was an emotional little kid. I loved stories. I loved reading. Um, I was just sort of fascinated by, um, movies. I was obsessed with American Beauty and Moulin Rouge and the stories behind them. And uh, I think that's where it came from. It's interesting. As a young girl, you like fairly complicated movies or complicated storylines because American Beauty is not like a seven-year-old storyline. You know what I mean? And I think I saw it when I was 12, but yes, yeah. it was definitely complicated. I went to a school called Brearley, which is a all-girl private school where I think the books that we were assigned were pretty advanced. And as soon as I would pick Ball Quiet on the Western Front or the Scarlet Letter, you know, I wouldn't put it down. I started doing commercials when I was really young, 11 or 12. Uh, a woman who became my manager saw me in the audience at a children's play, theater play, I think. Um, and was like, oh, she's cute. She could like sell cookies. Um, and I did book a bunch of national commercials and I thought that was very cool. And I found acting class to be a, like, um, almost like therapy now looking back, mm. like the solace of exploring different characters and learning how to cry on command and exploring yourself and what makes you sad and what makes you angry and what makes you happy and what makes you all these different emotions that you can then tap into, I think helped me understand myself better and, and thus helped me understand the world around me. In the environment that I grew up in on the Upper East Side of New York, going to private school, it was very much like you go to Harvard, Yale, Princeton. And I probably would have been better suited like going to a school where you talked about your feelings and like played drums and in that way they sort of let me just do what I wanted to do I don't think they fully understood it at first 
Um, but of course, I mean, my mom is so proud of me and, but no one said, oh, you should be an actress. And it was very much like, okay, that's what Alex is doing. And I think, you know, then when I was on the soap and doing films later on, it was like, wow, you know, that's what she's doing. Has your, has your love of acting grown over time? Has it stayed the same? And, and is there a particular love of drama versus comedy, you know, rom-com versus sci-fi like have you have you figured out what does bring you the greatest joy when it comes to acting drama comedy i'm into both do you just uh look at my boobs i was not my intention i didn't uh you look at them right now now i did because you were talking about them testing oh failed i think as long as you can tell a good story or teach somebody something or entertain them i i'm not picky yeah. Um, although I do think life is very funny and approaching even dark things with humor is very important. My passion for acting has stayed the same. I've just gotten better at it. Be fearless. We can do it. I believe in you. We can do it faster. The Our Home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully. Dream fearlessly. When did you get better or was there a particular instance or series of instances that really started you on this kind of elevation path? Doing horror films actually really helped because part of my problem was fear. I had tremendous stage fright. <laughs> would be very nervous in auditions. And I think that learning to let go of what people think and learning to just sort of, you have to get into this weird meditational place where you don't pay any attention to the world around you and you can feel free to try things and explore. And I think it helped me get out of my head and go, I don't really need to, my job is not to care what people think. My job is to get lost in it and try something new. On Percy Jackson, which is my first first big movie, the director, Chris Columbus, let us go to dailies every day, which is when you sit and watch all the footage from the day before. And that was so helpful for me because I could see, oh, that didn't work. And it didn't feel like it worked. And now I can see why it doesn't work. So that really helped. Have you stuck with doing that kind of daily thing or was that just kind of a magical moment with Percy Jackson? I did it for a number of years and sometimes it's hard. Directors don't want you to watch playback or because they don't want, they, they don't want you to get in your head and they don't want you to judge the shot or, but that's obviously not what I was looking for. I think I reached a point where l watching myself was not helpful anymore. It was served a purpose during a specific time. Would you ever want to be a director or producer? Would you enjoy, do you think, uh, that kind of participation in, in a film or a TV series? I like the idea of it, but I don't think I have the skill. I would be more interested in writing. What was your favorite thing about doing White Lotus? I love Mike White. Big smiles, wave Lani. Wave like you mean it. I love him so much, the creator, writer. He is so funny. Being a young man, this time right now can't be easy. Why? Because we can't harass girls anymore? No. Well. I love his perspective on life. This is the wrong room. We're paying for the honeymoon suite. I don't have a record of you booking that room, no. Uh, my mother booked the room. Maybe I should call my mother? I don't know. It's a social commentary on um, what it is to be privileged and have no sense of the world around you. It's very funny and very dark. He thinks I'm an ass. Were you an ass? I guess I'm just wondering what um, you might be able to do for us to make us feel better. No, I was actually trying to not be an ass. He failed. There are people, of course, we all have them in our lives who are not self-aware or a little trapped in their own world. Yeah, I yeah fair. <laughs> oh my God, look at her face. Rachel, you were such a beautiful bride, but also very pale, but now you have a little more color and it looks great. Thanks. Now, what brought you to die in a gunfight? How did that, how did that come about? We're not even invited to this thing, are we? Nope. 
I was offered that role. The script had been around Hollywood for, I think it was like 12 years in the making. It had had various actors attached to it, big actors, names you'd recognize, and they just never were able to make it for some reason. It was a beautiful, beautiful script. And it all came together all of a sudden. And I was like, what are the chances that on the 10th try that this is actually going to happen? Um, but, you know, they were like, all right, let's get on a plane. And um, I was really excited about it just because it had been so long to get it to come to fruition. And um, who doesn't like a good love story? Who doesn't? Wait, give me one little taste without giving away everything. Give me one little more taste of of what it's about. It's sort of Romeo and Juliet. Your son is trespassing. Diego's character and my character are part, are, we're both the children of very uh, influential companies and the companies are enemies. For generations, the Gibbon and Rathcart families had a blood feud. It was never about business. So it's lovers who their families are trying to keep them apart. So I need to explain to you why this is unacceptable. End it. How do you want to die? I want to die in a gunfight. If I had met you in high school and I'd asked you what would you love to do, would you have said acting? Would you have said that your expectation would be that, that you'd be an actor? Or what, what did you expect? When I was 16, 17, I was actually on a soap opera. I had a contract on all my children. Mm -hmm. But even then, I was always hesitant to call myself an actress because I sort of had this sense that I wasn't successful enough or good enough or there was this insecurity, this sort of sense of, um, oh, I can't really say I'm an actress. And then I uh, was actually let go from the show and um, I started uh, working in a restaurant bar and then I really struggled with it. And I remember people saying to me, people who knew me saying, why don't you, you should say you're an actress, you are an actress. But I remember not feeling confident enough with myself to actually tell people. That was another part of my journey was, was to say, I am an actress and I, am, I don't have to doubt myself in that way. And what about your brother? Did your brother go into acting? My brother and my sister um, went to college and then became actors. It's a fun business and um, I think they saw how much fun I was having and um, you know, it's this thing now where my two lawyer parents have, have three actor children. <laughs> and so how do they feel about that? And what is Thanksgiving like? I think they're, I think they're happy. I think, look, I mean, my mom always said she, she actually would tell me, she was like, don't become a lawyer. So I'm not sure what was going on, but I think you just want your children to be happy. What's the best advice you've either gotten or given about how to dream fearlessly and bring those dreams alive? I think almost in anything, having that, I don't know whether you call it a village or a tribe or, or a group, um, uh, and especially in something, as you said, where you're trying out a lot. And so no matter how much success you have, you also have a lot of things that don't go the way you wanted it to go. I think you need a meaningful enough set of people to help you navigate that. What else might someone not know? What, what might you tell people like me who are on the outside and just happen to see you on the screen? I wouldn't be the first person to say this, but I, I think that if you're thinking about money or um, attention or um, that it's going to be incredibly glamorous all the time, which it is. I've been very lucky to have so many wonderful experiences, but it's, it's about the work and working hard and loving what you do. This last year, obviously, I mean, it's an understatement to say that it was transformative and, you know, unusual in so many different dimensions. You know, what about you? How did this last year, if at all, you know, impact you, you think, or or stay with you? 
For me, it was, it actually started with the Me Too movement, which started with Trump's inauguration. Making their point in Washington and in city after city in America, the day after Donald Trump became their president. We were hit with a lot, our nation, the whole planet. So you're hit with this incredibly transformative period of time as a woman. The whole social conversations that we're having about what kind of society we want to live in for all different types of people and what kind of change do I want to see? The pandemic itself, I think it's made me a lot more appreciative of the things that I have. It's really refocused my um, the things that are important to me in my life, which is something that I think a lot of people are saying and feeling. I'm grateful to be in the arts and, and I write a lot for myself. I think that the stories that will come out of this period of time will be very interesting and we'll all try to make sense of it somehow. I, I, I can see you writing uh, something good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look forward to reading some of your writing, whether it ends up being script writing or or, or a novel or what have you. But, You're but sweet. Yeah, I think, I think it's gonna be good. You mind if I hit you with a little rapid fire? Would you mind if I sh asked a Please. variety of questions? First question, are you an introvert or an extrovert? I'm an introvert, I think. I'm surprised at the number of people in the arts who I meet who are on stage and yet are introverts. Um, what's your favorite movie of all time? American Beauty, just because it was the first movie, I was like, oh my God, what is this? What is life? I'm so proud of you. You didn't screw up once. It had such a profound impact on me at that time in my life. But I love all, I have so many favorite movies. What's the most beautiful place, Alex, you've ever been to? God, I've been to so many beautiful places. The Amalfi Coast is absolutely magical and I highly recommend a trip. What is the ultimate meal uh, with Alex? I cook pasta with butter and oil and garlic mm -hmm. and salmon, which I bake in the oven um, with lemons. And then I make a salad. It's always just basic, very basic food. <laughs> music is usually like 90s pop or classical music. I play a lot of WC and I love Beethoven. And you said 90s pop? Who's your karaoke uh, opportunity? Spice Girls, Hanson, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, Goo Goo Dolls, Third Eye Blind. I love oh, oh. stuff that I listened yep. to as a teenager yep. when I was, you know, an emo teenager dreaming about having a boy kiss me one day. Right. Hey, Alex, thank you so much uh, for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations on both of these projects. And uh, hope the world gets healthy and I meet you in the real world one day. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for talking to me. Alexander Daddario, Crew Talks, take one, marker. I liked her uh, just because it felt like she really came to have like a real conversation with yeah. you. Yeah. I felt like she really was herself. It was authentic. I, I like the fact that she was honest about, you know, where she come from. Like she was privileged. She had these parents who were big time lawyers and it was one of those things that she really worked hard. She got to where she got, but she, she know where she came from and she was aware of the outside world, which I appreciated. We're talking about the Spice Girls. That's totally me <laughs> at that time in the 90s. Um, I was in Brazil and that was like a huge thing. I liked how she said, uh, you know, the whole thing about the fact that she got dropped from the soap opera. Like how hard is that, right? It's like going back to a restaurant. even that she used that language mm -hmm. because so many of us cover up the things that don't go well. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah. Um, humble, vulnerable, real. Like, yeah. hey, it happens yeah. to everybody. Let's just yeah. talk about it. She's a craftswoman. Like she, she has studied her craft, right. and she, and she is a hard worker. And those are the sort of actors that I love. I'd forgotten that Christopher Columbus did uh, Percy Jackson, which was her first movie. If I could model my career after anyone, Christopher Columbus is sort of like my guy. Wow. And then he brought her in to look at dailies. Yeah. Like. That is just, that, that just warms my heart. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed Alexandra Daddario. Uh, what a good, easygoing person. I felt like she was here, she was present, she was in it. I'm so glad for her that she found something that she loves. I appreciate it. You really could feel that challenge, that confidence challenge that she had, and I thought she was very real about it, and I appreciate all that. I can't wait to read her book. Something tells me she's gonna write a couple of good ones. If any of you know that wonderful novel, Half Broken Horses, something tells me she's got one of those inside of her. 
of her, so we'll see. All right, listen, uh, be well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you want more, we've got a wonderful new episode every weekday. Just like, subscribe, comment, maybe even listen to the podcast. Good stuff there. Be safe. We'll see you soon. Thank you.